Excitement. Adventure. Boston Blackie. Enemy of those who make him an enemy. Friend of those who have no friends. Yes, sir. That's Boston Blackie, and he's quite a guy. In just a moment, we'll see him in one of his exciting adventures. But first, a word from our sponsor. If I remember correctly, I'm taking you to dinner, then to the theater, and then to a nightclub. Well? Well, this is a filling station for my wallet. Oh, Blocky! As I explained to you, since my husband's death, I have no further use for the car. I'm sailing to Europe tomorrow, so I'd like to dispose of it rather quickly. Well, if the car is all you say it is, I'll consider myself fortunate that you called me first. But excuse me, please. Hello, Blackie. Hello, Stuart. You're just the man I want to see. You know all about cars. Come on outside and take a look at one I'm thinking about buying. Be right with you as soon as I pick up some of your merchandise. Good. Well, why don't you step in and try it for yourself? Whitey, sit up. Harry's going to take your picture. I'll uh, mail you a check in the morning. Will you please have the car delivered to my home? Sorry, I was so long. Did you buy the car? Yes, very goodbye, too. in the morning. If you've got any more questions, you can find the answers in the newspaper. By the way, your rent's up here at noon. I can't believe Stuart would do a thing like this. Oh, well, Blackie, there's a telephone call for you. They wouldn't say who it was, but said it was important. Thank you. Excuse me, Mary. Hello? Yes? Stuart! Where are you? I'm in a motel. 19711 Chase Avenue in the Valley. Of course not. I can't explain it. I don't know what happened. Come on, Mary, we've got to get to the valley. You can eat later. Eat? Who's eating? Come on, boy. Hello. Yeah? All right, just a minute. Elizabeth, it's slick. Hello. Yeah, I've been watching the place like you said. He ain't come out yet, but a car drove up and a guy and a doll went inside. What did he look like? Tall. Mustache? That must be the man that Stuart talked to at the bank. He saw you come out of the car. So what? He thought I was Stuart, didn't he? Yes, but he saw me too, and I don't like that. Wait a minute, I'm trying to think of his name. What did Stuart call him? 
Yes, Blackie, that's it. Look, find out if his name is Blackie, and if it is, induce him to leave town. No, I don't want you to get rough. Just convince him that he'd be better off if he left town. All right, all right, I'll try and convince him. I saw her come out with you, very attractive. Who is she? I don't know who she is. She called me, said she wanted to sell her car, and I asked her to bring it over to the bank. You don't believe me, do you, Blackie? Well, I saw you leave the bank, and I saw you come in. I talked to you each time. I talked to you before I left the bank, but I don't remember another thing until I woke up here 20 minutes ago. You don't remember taking the money out of the vault? Certainly not. You're going to have a hard time convincing the police. The police? Why, man, I'm not a criminal. We better call him before it's too late. Loss of memory, my eyes. That cookie knows what he's doing. He's got that money stashed away someplace, and as soon as this thing blows over, he'll jump out and grab it quick. I think you're wrong, Inspector. Wrong? We got dozens of witnesses who saw him in the bank at closing time. The guard opened the vault for him and saw him take out the $500,000. You yourself saw him go back into the bank, and he looked you straight in the eye and denied it. The examining physician says that loss of memory alibi is ridiculous. That's why I think it's wrong. It's so ridiculous, it could be true. Oh, that's the trouble with you, Blackie. I work like a dog. <laughs> Excuse me, Whitey. I work like a slave building up a case, and you go around minimizing my evidence. Okay, Inspector, Whitey and I will go and minimize someplace else. If you're interested in finding the missing $500,000, look at Locker 65 in Union Station Court. something out of it. Thank you. 
he's in now. How he gets out of it, we'll discover in just a moment when we return for part two of our Boston Blackie adventure. You're mighty lucky. But if you ask me, I think Whitey's got more intelligence than you've got. I don't think he'll ask you, Inspector, but I will. Who do you think's the most intelligent, Whitey or Blackie? So I made a mistake. Lay off, will you? <laughs> a mistake, he calls it. Whitey made the mistake by getting you out of that spot. I wasn't in a spot. No, no, I was in a trunk. Oh. Inspector, look at these pictures. Who looks the brightest, Whitey or Blackie? Mm. Well, it's hard to tell. I... They, they both married. Hmm? Are these the pictures you took in front of the bank? Your power of deduction is amazing, but your eyesight isn't so good. Remember filling station for Wallace? Remember? Inspector, let me have your magnifying glass. My, your eyes are bad. The license number of that car we're looking for is 1F49115. Get me the registered owner of the car, 1F49115. Let me get the address. Don't you think it might be a good idea if we took Stuart with us? Well, we can't do that. He's out on bail and nobody knows where he is. Oh, great. But why can't we leave now? Why do we have to wait till Stuart's convicted? Stuart's picture is in the front page of every newspaper in the country. You couldn't take one step without someone watching every move you make. When he's convicted, they'll forget about it. And you. Yeah, but why can't you fix me up to look like myself again? David, how long did it take me to make you look like Stuart? A year, but in this it case... It would still take a year. I'm a plastic surgeon, not a magician. I don't intend to wear Stuart's face for the rest of my life. Why not? With $100,000 in a foreign country, no one's going to care what you look like, not even you. How about you, Elizabeth? Do you care? No, I don't. I don't care one way or another. I've planned this thing for two years. Just so happened that you had most of Stuart's characteristics, though. So you cut up my face and kept me cooped up in a room for months. Then I took the chances and you took the money. You got your share. Yes, you cut that up too, but good. 80-20. That's Boston Blackie. That double-crossing slick he told me he got rid of him. Now put that away and get into the library. Yes? 
I'm Inspector Faraday from Police Department. I'd like to speak to Elizabeth Farrell. I'm Elizabeth Farrell. Won't you come in, please? Won't you sit down? Miss Farrell, is that your car outside? Yes, it is, Inspector. Did you try to sell it to Mr. Stewart, the bank president? Yes, I, I'd heard that Mr. Stewart was interested in this type of automobile, so I telephoned the bank and made an appointment to show it to him. Then I took it down to the bank. Why the bank rather than his home? Well, you'll have to ask Mr. Stewart that question. It was his idea. Well, did he say he'd buy the car? Yes, he did. He asked me to have it delivered to his home, but... Well, he was arrested before I could do so. Now, you said you went to the bank and talked with Mr. Stewart in his office. And you and Mr. Stewart went outside. He examined the car and you agreed on a price. And you said you would drive the car over to his home. Now, he entered the bank and you drove off. Is that right? Is that right? Yes, that's right, Inspector. Well, why didn't you take that trip to Europe as you had planned? Well, to be perfectly frank, Inspector, I needed the money that Mr. Stewart was going to pay me for the car in order to take the trip. Thank you, Miss Farrell. I'm sorry I couldn't have been more help, but I told you everything I know. I'm sure you have. Good day. Good day. Blackie, her story's the same as Stewart's. Yeah, she seems to be in the clear, all right. Wonder where Mary went. Uh, she's probably looking the grounds over. Well, I'll run on and I'll see you later, Blackie. Well, I just saw Stewart. He was in the next room listening at the door. That's all? Well, come on, let's go. But Blackie! Come on, let's go. Well, that takes care of them. I was really worried when he headed to that library. You come in there, I'd have plugged him. That's what I was worried about. Come on, give me the gun. Are you kidding? I can take care of myself. Dave. Please. Now, how about a drink to calm your nerves? Sorry, Miss Farrell, but I forgot something. Really? I forgot to tell my friend Stewart I don't like being taken for a patsy. Well, I understand how you feel, but you see, Larry was just trying to keep my name out of the papers. I'm sorry, Blackie, but you understand, don't you? I couldn't get Elizabeth involved. But you didn't care how involved you got me. Come on, Mary. I want some fresh air. Oh, Stuart, I'd suggest you buy an evening paper to make sure they spell your girlfriend's name correctly. You've got to operate on my face. All right, you win. Who are you phoning? Flick. I'll need his help. Get my medical bag out of the closet. Flick, get over here right away. Dave. What did you do with your share of the money? I know where it is. That's all that's necessary. Yes, but if something should happen to you... If something happens to me, nobody gets it. What's that for? Freezes the skin tissues. Hold on. Hold Are you sure you locked the front gate? Yeah, yeah. Hey, aren't you going to operate? What for? Where he's going, he won't need it. He never saw the woman before. His mind went blank when he stepped into the car. My mind went blank when I believed that fairy tale. Don't take it so hard. What are you going to have? What fairy did you say when you told him? Well, what do you think? Blackie, I've been trying to reach you. I'll oh, save it, Stuart. I've already called the police. 
And the papers with your girlfriend's picture in it will be on the streets any minute now. My girlfriend? I don't know what you're talking about. That's right. Now tell me you lost your memory again. Tell me you don't remember the conversation we had about an hour ago. An hour ago? I haven't seen you since the day I gave myself up. Boy, I'll say one thing. You've got a lot of nerve. Now get out of here before I forget myself. Please, Blackie. Mr. Stewart, what did you want to tell Blackie? Well, I found this card in my suit pocket. That may be the woman that tried to sell me the car. Mrs. Thurl, M.D., plastic surgeon. Isn't that the girl that was kicked out of the medical profession for malpractice? Hey, that's right. This might clear up a lot of things. I'm going back to that house, and you get in touch with Faraday and tell him to get over there fast. Right. You come with me, because if what I think is so, this will clear you. He's coming, too. Slick? Yeah? Did she operate? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I can't feel anything. My face is all numb. That's the local anesthetic. It'll wear off in a couple of hours. We'd better get out of here. You get the bags out of my room. Doing it. I'm packing my bag. Now, we'll have to hurry. You'd better get your money. What'd you do with it? It's in the living. You're going the wrong uh, way. Here. I'm busy. This way. The fireplace. Over there. going the wrong way again. Funny, I thought the front door was over there. Yeah, it's locked. I'm over. Where are the steps? Straight ahead. Keep going. Give you a lift. What are you boys looking for? Package. What kind of package? Oh, about so big. Is this it? Hmm? Thanks, Mary. That's wonderful. You'll get a nice present for this. Thank you very much, Miss Wesley. What's everybody so excited about? What's in the package? A hundred thousand dollars. Is that all? A hundred thousand dollars? 